Hey there, Stashers. Welcome to episode 105 of the Craft Stash Podcast. I'm your host, Kim. Hey there, Stashers. Welcome to episode 105 of the Craft Stash Podcast. I'm your host, Kim. Let's pick a little theme music for the episode, shall we? Today is Monday, March 3rd in the year of our Lord 2014, and it's a Monday night. So it's around 11 o'clock, and um, I've had a full day at work and a full day of taking care of a sick kitty. So I think I want to be um, relaxing and sitting by the fireside. And then from there, I think I want something really lush, sexy, and relaxed. And then from there, I think I'm going to choose Sultry Sirens. If you're wondering what I'm doing, messing around with my favorite app ever, I really should be getting paid for doing this, but I love Songza.com so much. I've got the app on my phone, and I like to pick a musical theme every once in a while when we do the podcast. So right now, we're listening to Kate Nash, her song, um, The Nicest Thing. I kind of like Kate Nash. I think she's British. She's got a really witty, sharp sense of humor. Um, so she'll help us be a little bit warm and cozy tonight. How are you guys doing? Oh boy, Monday nights. Monday nights in March. I'm very excited about spring being on the way, but I'm not so excited because it's still friggin' freezing outside. Um, but such it is, such as it is, um, pretty soon I will be complaining about the heat, so I will hush my mouth. Um, if you guys are new to the podcast, welcome aboard. If you've been here before, welcome back. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Um, especially thank you for sticking with me because I've been made a bit of a liar thanks to our friends at blip.tv. If you are a um, video podcast, video craft podcast watcher, no doubt you've heard about all the craziness that people have been going through and the hoops that they've been jumping through because blip.tv has decided not to syndicate our podcasts to iTunes. Don't blame them. Everything's business. It's not personal. Get it. Um, my podcast in general, I think last week or two weeks ago, I actually recorded a mini episode talking about my new RSS feed, which turns out doesn't work. <laughs> so the best way to watch the show will always be to head to creoli.com slash craft stash. Um, I was going to use that website as my archive, but new episodes will still be there. I also have a new podcast site, which I'm not sure if I'm going to keep anymore because that solution didn't work out. It was craftstashpodcast.wordpress.com. We'll see what happens with that. If you're ever not sure, just head on over to our Ravelry group where you can find the Craft Stash podcast group and keep in the loop there. In terms of tonight's episode, it's going to be short and sweet. I've got a little bit of what I'm crafting, a little bit of what I'm stashing, and some general periphery. So let's just jump right in, shall we? Yay, what am I crafting? Um, I had a really witty name for this. Ah, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, I was like, I had such a good name for this episode, now I can't remember it because it's Monday and I'm brain dead. Uh, today's episode, episode 105, is called Can of Hoopa Ass. <laughs> because the hoopa that I'm knitting for my sister is kicking my ass. I will tell you about it in a little bit. Um... I'll tell you about it right now. Do you guys know what a hippo is? If you've watched my episode before or if you have Jewish friends, you probably know. A hippa is a covering used at some Jewish weddings to represent the hearth and home. And usually it's just lace or canopy or whatever. Um, sometimes it's hand knit, as you can see. So this is the hippa that I've been working on for my sister. This is the center. I don't know if you guys can tell where my finger is pointing out of right there and it's going to be a square that turns into a rectangle and I'm sorry the lights are really bright so the contrast might be a little bit off but this is a lovely lovely veil of Isis pattern it is a free pattern on Ravelry I believe um, and I'm using some yarn that I got custom dyed by uh, shoot, I think her name on Ravelry and Etsy is color adventures or something um, I got seven different skeins um, and a, a lovely gradation of pale blue to teal. Um, and it was going pretty well. I'm usually a pretty fair lace knitter, 
Um, but for some reason, this pattern, the way it's written, it's a free pattern, so I'm so not complaining because you get what you pay for. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I just realized that I'm a very analytical knitter, so people who don't write patterns in a very analytical way, who don't use conventions, um, in a logical manner I just have problems with their patterns so Stephen West brilliant designer can never follow his patterns Isolde Teague brilliant designer have a very hard time following her patterns um, this particular pattern let me look it up on my um, on my internets is by this particular pattern is by Andrea Jurgrau Jurgrau and it's again a free pattern on Ravelry and it's absolutely lovely and I'm not saying that it's not well written for someone like me who if you say block A1 is section 1, block A2 is section 2 but then you start talking about section 3 and don't tell me how you got to section 3 it's a little bit hard for me to figure out so whenever I have problems with these um, organically written patterns I like to think of them as what I try to do is step back and say ultimately I'm knitting a square I know that if I'm knitting a square, I gotta uh, increase twice every segment, four times around total. So those kinds of logical thoughts kind of bring me back. Um, because what happens with this particular pattern, and I can tell you because it's free, is there are um, four or five or even six different lace patterns, and I can show it to you because I have them all up on Knit Companion. One sec. Um, so I don't know if you'll be able to, probably not, you won't be able to see this at all. Sorry guys. Yeah. You won't be able to see it at all, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six different lace patterns, which is in and of itself not bad. Um, the problem is, let me see if I can show this to you at least. The problem is that, um, as they start to kind of grow out from the schematic, the way that one pattern turns into another. You can see all those lovely gray spaces. Those are gaps where no stitches exist. That's so that when the pattern starts to increase and kind of get larger, you can kind of mentally fill in those gaps. Maybe it's just because I haven't worked a pattern like this before. It's throwing me the frig off. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of just struggling with it. And I think I'm also mentally struggling with it because I'm knitting my sister a six by four foot lace pattern on size six needles. So. You know it could be that so um, what I've done is I am using my knit picks interchangeables I don't know if you'll be able to see this at all but these needles are great because they have tiny little holes in them so that you can string waist yarn along and put in as many lifelines I don't know if you guys can see my gold lifeline you can put in as many lifelines as you want so I've got my lifeline in here right before the pattern is supposed to repeat and expand and I'm basically gonna just say logically you know if I'm supposed to increase 16 stitches in this row um, or 8 stitches in this row where do I need to put my increases and kind of backfill in the pattern that way if that doesn't work I've gone ahead and picked an alternate pattern to transition this lace into an alternate pattern that's much much easier um, basically I'm going to do the Van Dyke and Horseshoes Shawl, which is another free pattern on Ravelry by Kath Ward. Um, I'll show you a black and white image of it. But you can see it pretty closely translates to the um, repeating V's that is used in the Veil of Isis. I think the Veil of Isis is much more um, intricate because it's not as symmetrical, um, but this is going to be my fallback. So I'm going to try tonight my darndest to really, really figure out this pattern. Um, and the other thing with free patterns is that the support, like I have not emailed Andrea at all, so I shouldn't say this, but um, not as many people have made this pattern, so I'm kind of on my own, I feel like, in terms of figuring it out. But um, it is what it is. I'm not complaining at all. I'm just kind of letting you guys know. You get what you pay for. Um, <laughs> so the hoopla is coming along. I've got until August to finish it. It's right now um, about the size of a pillow, if I were to kind of fully block and stretch this out because you see it's a very dense lace um, so if I block it as aggressively as I'm planning to it's gonna grow a lot um, so that's a good thing you know it's growing faster and what I was also going to do is because ultimately size is my goal here I was I'm currently knitting them on size I think these are 
I lied to you, these are size 8. I was going to actually start working them on size 10 and a half to open up the lace even more, but we'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm also beating it. It's going pretty well. Um, I have to say thank you to Emily of the What's Just Watching podcast, because I was watching her podcast recently, and she mentioned, I don't know which pattern she was working on, but she was working on a pattern that needs a lot of different stitch markers, and my stitch marker collection is growing very nicely, thanks to some Etsy sellers who always include them free with their patterns. However, um, because I've got several different repeats on this, I was going to potentially need stitch markers in the 10s and 20s. So as I was watching uh, Emily's podcast, she mentioned that she uses these really cheap little rubber bands. Um, I know them from when I was a kid and my mom used to do my hair and she would put these on the ends of my braids. <laughs> but I think most other people know them because they are used to make those stretchy little bracelets that kids play with these days. So, you know, braid rubber bands, stretchy bungees, whatever these are called, um, I'm using these as stitch markers. Um, just to keep my place and they're working pretty well so that is my hoppa which is hoping my ass <laughs> um but i'm gonna slog through it because it's for my sister and it's an heirloom so what else am i crafting i'm also i have a finished object that i will show you in just a hot second but remember a couple of weeks ago i was working on like four different cowls at the same time i have since abandoned two of those four cowls um, I finished one of them a couple weeks ago, um, and my subway knitting is the third cowl that I still have on the needles, and it's moving along pretty nicely. I'm really excited about it. This is my, um, I forgot what it was called, inside-ish, outside-ish cowl. Um, it is a pattern by Church Mouse Yarns and Tees. Um, I actually did not purchase the pattern, I kind of just backwards figured it out because it's just a tube, but this is based on their pattern, so I want to give them credit there. Um, this is being knit out of lovely and amazing um, cashmere from Heibu Textiles, as well as lovely and amazing silk mohair from Heibu Textiles that I purchased at Vogue Knitting Live. Really simple pattern. I think I just cast on um, somewhere between 120 and 180 um, stitches on size 3 circular needles, joined in the round, and just started knitting up put in a tiny bit of lace, I don't know if you guys can see, my lighting is a little bit bootleg because it's nighttime, um, but yeah, there you go. There's a little triangle lace happening there, um, and the point of this cowl is that you can wear it tall by just letting all the layers kind of hang out, hang up, or you can fold it in on itself to do a double layered cowl, so that's the idea pretty straightforward, really, really excited about it. Um, this is probably the finest yarn that I've ever knit with in terms of thinness. I don't know if you guys can see how thin it is. And this is the fuzzier uh, silk mohair. So the cashmere was a two-ply cashmere, which is ridiculously thin. Um, but it'll be nice and soft and warm to the touch, so I'm excited about that. It's probably going to take me another month to finish it because it's so tiny and I only knit on it about 20 minutes a day while I'm, at, while I'm commuting, but it's keeping me very happy. It's very, very mindless. I like it. Um, the other thing that I'm crafting in progress but not finished, I will keep the whip till the end, I will keep the FO to the end, is some spinning. Um, I kind of had a weekend of fails with knitting this weekend between me trying to get some more work done on my Measure in Love cowl, me trying to get this hoopa together, um, I had an, a misadventure in arm knitting which I'll talk about in a second. Um, spinning was kind of my go-to to keep me sane and keep me remembering that I'm a decent crafter after all <laughs> even though I was having a crappy crafting weekend. Um, so I started spinning these lovely, lovely um, tribbles from Kate of Gourmet Stash. Um, so I can't even remember when I got these tribbles, but these are some of her Muse Uprising tribbles, which is a lovely, lovely black, charcoal black, um, with pops of rainbowy uh, color. Uh, I think it's 100% merino. There's not a lot of special funky stuff in here, which is nice. Um, it's nice to just have an easy spin. I'm spinning this on my golden spindle. Sorry, the colors are, again, going to be off because I'm recording at night. I don't know if you guys can... Yeah, you probably won't see some of the color play in there. Let me try this for you. 
Yeah, it just looks jet black, but there's a lot of fun, um, subtle colors playing around in here. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, and I'm keeping it in my very simple spindle bag, which I got at um, the Zombie Knit Apocalypse last year. The cool thing about the Muse Uprising um, tribbles is that they're double layered, so they basically come in one ball that looks like it's gray and black together, but you can split them. And what I'm going to do is spin all of the black and then spin all of the gray and then chain ply it so that I have a self striping because there are about five or six tribbles. So if I do them all that way, um, I'll have a nice long run of black and then a nice long run of silver and then I can just kind of do a big wide stripe for them. So that'll be fun. And I think that's all that I'm technically crafting right now. I have a finished object to show you and I also have a bit of a tutorial. Give me one sec. All right. <laughs> So a couple of days ago we were expecting a really bad snowstorm and it didn't come to fruition uh, and for some reason because I was having some fails with my knitting projects I wanted to make something foolproof and fast and easy and forgive me for picking all of the lint all of my off of my face from this cowl. Um, so I ran out to Michael's and they as always have like 20% coupons going on so I went out and bought myself a buttload of chunky chunky yarn which was this fun stuff it's patents um, I think it's called patents cobbles patents is the manufacturer and cobbles is the base I guess it's a really super bulky super chunky it almost looks like little rocks made of felt um, strung together um, and I bought like six balls of them because I wanted to make an arm knitted scarf Actually, that's not true. I wanted to make a big, chunky, fast scarf, and because my gauge is never, ever on, even though I knew that each of the hanks were 42 yards, I ended up buying six of them because I was like, oh, I don't know how many I'll need. How many yards uh, will 42, uh, how many, how big of a scarf will 42 yards of super bulky yarn make? No clue. So I bought six of them and essentially ended up making a blanket. I came home and tried to knit them on my size 17 knitting needles and promptly got some hand cramps and I said, oh my god, this is not cool. Then I tried to crochet them and realized that I only like crochet in very certain kind of configurations, plus my hands started to hurt and I was like, crap, what am I going to do with all of this yarn? And then I remembered that I technically know how to arm knit. So <laughs> I refreshed my memory by looking at a couple of arm knitting videos on YouTube. And then I promptly set out to say, well, I want a really big, thick cowl, so these people are casting on five stitches, I'm going to cast on 20. <laughs> and I proceeded to make a blanket scarf, um, which was kind of fun, but because I was not planning on making a blanket scarf, I had to frog it. The good thing is that this huge, huge um, throw that you see took me about an hour to knit. Um, and that's after me messing up several times and not really remembering how to cast on for arm knitting. So. Um, I kind of let it sit on the bed for a day and then I ripped it out and I made these really fun big balls of yarn which I don't actually have with me right now. It's fine. Give me one sec. Yes. Sorry. I had to go out and grab these because they're such fun, fun things to look at. These are my big balls of yarn. <laughs> I bought um, two different colors. Um, I think one is called Char Grey. And the other call is called Moon Rock, which is basically a grayish brown and black. And what I did was I also, because I was at Michael's and they have shit tons of fun cheap yarn, I bought some Karen's Simply Soft in a very bright indigo color. And I held it, uh, I held two of the strands of the patterns together, along with one of the strand of the Karen. Simply Soft. So I had a big ball of the black and the gray together, a big ball of the gray together, and then a big ball of the black together. So I got home today and I knit myself this huge chunky infinity cowl. Um, and I figured because it, this literally took me 15 minutes, um, I would do a super quick tutorial. Um, the one thing I would say is, <laughs> you're going to kill me for saying this, but you do still need to understand your gauge when you're doing these um, arm knitted cowls it, only because you don't want to end up with something that's 20 feet long and you don't want to end up with something that's super super skinny so 
I would still kind of do um, just cast on five stitches and do ten rows and see how far that gets you. And if you like it, keep going. If you don't, rip it out because it only takes like 15 minutes. I wanted a very, very specific size and shape. Um, so I actually th tried three times before I got this right. I wanted to make something that would be able to kind of be a, a snood by kind of wrapping it on top of my hair and then back around and not have it kind of flapping and flying too much around and you can still see there's full coverage and then also if I wanted to I can just kind of let it hang out around my neck and be super super warm but still let, let air flow through so I had to do some trial and error and as much as I like the way that the purple um, Karen looks in here I have to be honest it made it really really messy um, because as I wear this I'm sure what's gonna happen is my fingers will get caught just in the big loops of the arm knitting itself but these skinnier Karen um, loops I just just know are gonna be pulled out of, sh out of shape all over the place so lesson learned probably won't do it again but it does provide a fun pop of color because otherwise this is a whole lot of black and gray for me um, but yeah <laughs> the other thing that I'm learning about this yarn is that it's very, very splitty. So there are little wisps flying everywhere, but that's the price we pay for warmth. So let me do a quick arm knitting tutorial before we talk about stash. Actually, I will talk about stash first because I only have one thing. Um, I have been not stalking, but I've been waiting to get an update from, I think the way this Etsy store is pronounced is Curare, Q-U-A-R-A-R-E. Um, she has lovely, lovely, lovely multiple color self-striping and she's all over Instagram. I think her name is Janelle. Um, and I finally scored some and I'm very, very excited. This is going to be my first multi-stripe that's more than four different colors. Um, I believe this is six different colors and there's a whole lot of gray in here and I'm navy and I'm really excited because as much as I like fun colors, gray and navy are actually my favorite neutrals. So I'm promising myself that I can cast this on after I finish either my cowl or I get onto my second color of my hoppa. Uh, these are going to be some really, really fun self-striping sets, so I wanted to share them with you. So that's all I've got for stash. Now let's look at the tutorial, shall we? So I think um, I like a lot of the tutorials that are out there for arm knitting um, on YouTube and on blog websites like Knit Picks and um, Lion Brand because they're very, very straightforward and simple and their audience is people who don't knit. So if you are intimidated by arm knitting, it's a really good resource. However, if you do knit, I feel like they take things a little bit too slow. When I try to remember how... Um, arm knitting is supposed to start when using those tutorials, it kind of throws me off. So I'm going to stand up and show you how I start arm knitting. So this is just some sample yarn and hopefully you guys can see it enough color contrast. Um, the thicker the better, that's why I had doubled these up. At one point I had even put four strands together and that made it super super thick. So if you wanted to make a rug or a seat cushion or something really really big and smooshy and floofy you know four super bulky yarns like this would be perfect for a scarf or anything to wear it just became like wearing a pillow or wearing a teddy bear so that's why I would discourage it but for this quick demo I'll just use one strand to show you so as a knitter you want to think about your hands as two knitting needles they're kind of amazing knitting needles because they are, while they're not double double pointed, they are crochet hooks at the same time as they are knitting needles. And I'm going to keep flexing my muscles here so you can see. Um, you want to think about your hands as knitting needles when you are um, kind of having the, the, the stitches kind of held on your arms. But you want to think of your arms as crochet hooks when you are actually doing the arm knitting. I'll tell you what I mean by that. First, you're going to start by measuring out at least two arms length. Then you're going to make a slip knot or any old knot that you're comfortable with. Now you're going to think about your figure eight cast on that you normally do. 
um, this is the part that was really confusing while watching all of the videos on YouTube because they assume that you don't know how to cast on for knitting. If you do, just think about it as um, you are, you're still using this, your left hand as a regular hand. Um, you're using your right hand as if it was a knitting needle. So I have got my yarn and my loop on my knitting needle hand and I'm using my left hand as a regular hand and I'm doing that fun thing where you kind of grab both ends of the yarn and slingshot it open and then wrap your fingers so that you're kind of holding the yarn like as if it was a gun. Now I'm going to take my knitting needle hand, scoot it under, can you see that? Yeah. Scoot it under the thumb and gr now pretend that it's a crochet hook and grab the yarn from over your index finger. And while you're doing that, you're going to put that loop onto your, transform it back into a knitting needle and put it onto your knitting needle hand. Now you've got two loops. Let's do that again. I'm going to pretend um, this is a knitting needle. I'm going to scoot under my thumb. Now I'm going to pretend this is a crochet hook and I'm going to grab over my index finger. That's three. Do that again. Under the thumb. Over the index finger. That's four. Let's do it one more time. Under the thumb. Over the uh, index finger. So now I've got five loops. Now they're both knitting needles again. So I need to transfer things from one needle to the other. How do I normally do that? Snug it up a little bit. Um, wrap your fing your yarn around your fingers as you normally would. And transfer over. Now what you would normally do is pick this loop up from using your knitting needle hand as if it was a crochet hook. Kind of pick this, pick the working yarn up and slip it over. What I actually do because I like the neat edges. Um, you know how when you knit you can do the thing where you slip the first stitch, knit the last stitch always. I do that so that you have a nice neat edge. So I'm just going to slip the first stitch and then continue to knit. So to knit, I'm going to keep my working yarn in my left knitting crochet hook hand. Now and use my left hand to slide off the live stitch from my right hand. Now I use my right hand to pick that in, that uh, yarn back up and put the loop on my left. And now it almost feels like crocheting because it's all about moving loops from left to right. Let's try it again. I've got my left knitting needle hand. I've got my right knitting needle hand. My right knitting needle hand. Sorry, my left knitting needle hand picks up the working yarn, slips off the loop from my right hand using my thumb to kind of hold it. Now I use my right hand to fish it back out, put that loop on the left. One more time, we're going to use your left hand to hold the yarn, slip the loop off of your right hand with your left thumb, use your right hand to open the loop back up and scoop up the yarn out of your left hand and put that loop on your left hand down. Now we're at the last stitch. So again, I'm going to knit this last stitch by uh, using my left hand to hold the yarn and my right hand to pull it through. You can do it all in one movement. Um, I was just doing it in separate movements to make it easier. So now it doesn't look like very much. So now here's the part where you slip the first stitch. Don't do anything to it. Now you go, you use your your right hand to fish the left loop off of your left hand and then pick up the yarn. I'm doing the same exact thing that I was before, only I'm going a little bit faster. Let me do it slow again. So I'm going to use my right hand to hold the yarn, use my right thumb to pluck the loop off my left hand, open that loop with my left hand, pull the yarn through, and pull that loop onto my right hand. Now if I do it in one motion, I'll basically use my left hand to grab the working yarn, pull through, and put that loop on my right hand. Now that I'm at the last stitch, I'll do that again. And now everything's on my right hand. 
I'm gonna do that a couple more times. And then I'll talk about how to keep this looking like knitting and not like garter. Once you get a rhythm, it's really, really easy as a knitter. You just kind of fly through this. Just get a couple more rows on. And again, if I had two strands, this would look a little bit more substantial, but I only have one strand, so it's going to look really, really open and stringy. So you can already see I've got a little bit of stuff happening. And again, it should look more substantial because I'd be holding more than one together. But I don't know if you can tell, this is the wrong side because this is the garter stitch side or the, the reverse stockinette side and this is the knit side where everything looks nice and smooth and, and uh, stockinette stitch. The way that I'm keeping that by ha happening, let me see if I can turn a little bit to show you while I knit. Um, as you're picking up your yarn, you're going to kind of see that this, the, the smooth stockinette side is facing you, and in order to keep that going, you want to just make sure that the way that you open the loops keeps your knitting looking like stockinette. If you all of a sudden just pull this straight through, you're going to see a twist. You don't want that if you want the stockinette look. You want to make sure that you open it up such that the left leg of the stitch kind of stays on the left, if that makes sense. So your hands might actually do a couple of different things if you're not paying close attention, but the reason I like it is that I don't have to remember to always go in through the left leg or the right leg. I just kind of do what I need to do. And as I'm working back and forwards, you just make sure that you always want the knit stitch to be open and not crossed on itself. The other reason that I like this arm knitting is because if you've never uh, reverse knit, the thing where you knit back and forth and never have to purl and still get stuck in a stitch is a really good way to kind of practice that um, because that's essentially what you're doing. You're knitting back and forth on two, ne on two needles that are not double pointed and you're not turning it around and you never ever have to purl. So that's why I like it. So now as we're getting towards the end, you can see I have a small ball left. I'm just going to do a couple more rows because I want to show you how to bind off. And there are tons and tons and tons of YouTube videos, free tutorials that are pictures, paid patterns <laughs> that have pictures and videos, because this is so easy and fun. Um, and if you were like me and you're having a weekend of fails, it's just nice to kind of have a quick scarf already done in like five minutes. And you can forgive all the ends that I have, because this is like five small pieces that I cut and sewed, like knotted back together. So now that we've decided that our scarf is long enough and we're going to try and bind off, binding off you're also using the crochet concept because you're basically going to want to make sure that you start dropping loops, right, you want to have less loops. So right now I have a total of five loops, one, two, three, four, five, so as I walk work across this one last time I should have four loops and three loops and two loops and one loop and the way I'm going to do that is I'm still going to slip my first stitch without working it. I'm going to knit my second stitch. Now I I have one loop on my left, sorry, my right needle hand and one loop on my left needle hand and I'm just going to slip the right needle hand loop back over this loop and I've now lost one. I've got four total. Let's do that again. I'm going to leave my right needle hand loop. I'm going to knit from the left. Now I've got two on the right and just slip it back over. Do it one more time. Work that stitch from left to from right to left. Still got two open. Flip the right hand loop over the loop that you just created. Now I've got one on each hand and my last one. And do the same exact thing. And now you just pull it all the way through. And if you wanted to make a cowl, 
you would try really, really hard, <laughs> and this would be a little bit easier because you um, always slipped the first and knit the last. You'd be able to kind of take end to end and mattress stitch them together to form an infinity cowl. So, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was clear. And hopefully that was enticing and now you want to make your own infinity scarf. I will post a couple of links to the tutorials that I personally use to help you along on this. And let me know how it goes. Maybe we'll have a little infinity cowl, infinity blanket, sorry, arm knit uh, cowl and arm knit blanket along in the Ravelry group. Okay guys, how about a little periphery for you? So I have been debating on <laughs> some news um, and I don't want to make a big deal out of it. Um, I think it's a very, very personal thing, but I, I know that a lot of you guys have been asking me over Instagram and over the podcast um, Ravelry group over the past couple weeks about my kitten, my kitten catten, Tiger Lily. She's so awesome, but she's not doing very well. Um, we found out that she had some bad teeth and as she was getting her bad teeth pulled, we found out that Kitty's got cancer. Um, she's got something called a squamous carcinoma, which is a growth. Um, I think it's germane to the lymph nodes, but I could be making that up. Um, a lot of older cats get it. She's about 13, 14 years old right now. Um, and a lot of older cats get it and she has a growth on her tongue. So it's really, really hard for her to eat and over the past couple weeks she's not been doing very well so you know I'm enjoying as much time with her as I possibly can a couple of you guys know and you've been so 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 supportive and I really really thank you and I was really debating on whether or not to say anything in the podcast um, but it's been the reason that I haven't been podcasting and it's probably been the reason that my craft mojo has been off um, she's an awesome awesome girl and she's trying really really hard but I, yeah, I'm probably not the kind of person that's going to try and keep her alive because I don't think that's very nice. Um, she lives a very good life, so she will be with me as long as possible, and when she's not with me, I want her to be as comfortable um, and as quickly not here as possible, so just a little heads up. <laughs> um, sorry if that's a bit of a downer. Thank you guys so much for your support. Um, I think you guys know this about me by now. My podcast is pretty real. Um, I try not to sugarcoat things and I try not to get on soapboxes, um, but if something's bothering me, I'll let you guys know. So this has been bothering me and I'm letting you guys know. So <laughs> thank you so much for your support. Really, really appreciate it. Um, and hopefully you and I can hang out with Tiger a little bit longer. Um, and yeah, other than that, I kind of feel like I don't really want to talk about the weekend. Um, it was me hanging out with, with Tiger and it was really, really nice for what it was. So. On that note, sorry if it was a bit of a downer. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to end that. Sorry. Maybe I will cut this part out. But anyway, um, not much more periphery outside of that. Um, in the meantime, please don't forget, now it is March. We're going to have a March birthday uh, thread up. So I'm going to be pulling a winner for the February birthdays next time we meet just because it's Monday night and I'm kind of like, ah. Um, but please do keep playing along. You also have the rest of this month, March, to get in on the fun of the uh, first quarter along, which is the Gracious Gal gift along. You basically are just knitting or crocheting or spinning up something um, that is a pattern that either someone gifted to you or you gifted to someone, and there's going to be a fun prize at the end of the month for that. And I think that's, I think that's pretty good. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I know that there are so many different options for podcasts, and especially now that iTunes and I need to start figuring ourselves out again, um, it might be harder to get to the episodes, but I do really appreciate you sticking around because you guys keep me coming back for more. I, I'm addicted to talking to you guys. I just can't stop. Every time I think that life is getting too busy, um, I get brought back in, and I really, really enjoy it. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me, and if you can't craft it, stash it. Cheers.